go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.02. Um, and primarily, um, this meeting is going to be uh, an opportunity for the board to have some dialogue and um, connect with our uh, legislative uh, group that is representing our towns. Um, and uh, the rest of the stuff that we have on the agenda is is fairly straightforward. So, and we will be having an executive session um, this meeting as well. So, um, so that we stay on track, I'm going to move right on to just reading our preamble for public comment, and then opening up the meeting to public comment. Uh, I just have to find that public comment preamble. <laughs> and was that what you pulled out here? No, no, no. Okay. no. It's, All right. it's one page in here, and it's just, just got not ready. Okay, here we go. So, uh, the board welcomes comments, but it is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint com procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you, you are asked to by me. Please identify yourself with your first and last name in your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. And with that, I'd like to open up for public comment. Um, and we'll start with public here, and then we'll move to online if there are any. Do we have any folks who would like to speak tonight? Go ahead. Okay, do I need to speak in the mic, or can I speak from here? Uh, from there. From, from there is okay. okay. And remember your name and your town address. Yes, uh, Elaine Young from Brookfield. Uh, and I wanted to mention the equity policy and wanted to talk about that briefly. Um, I appreciate that there is discussion about an equity policy happening with the school board. I think that's incredibly important for our students and for our community. Uh, I'd like to see it be more specific. It seems very general, um, almost vanilla, if you will. It's good boilerplate language that we can all feel good about. But what I'm not seeing are things that we can actually, that are actionable, fully actionable. And so the big point that I wanted to make is the final sentence of the policy that says, the superintendent shall identify outcome indicators as necessary to monitor this policy and shall provide an annual status report to the board. And I'm hopeful and I would like to understand from the superintendent at some point, that you know, may not be appropriate tonight obviously, um, what does that look like? How will the superintendent identify these indicators? And will the superintendent be bringing together community members and students and staff and faculty to have conversations to help inform that information? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else? Yes, go ahead. Um, Sierra Bond of uh, Brookfield. Um, so similarly, talking about the equity policy, I'm really glad that something like that is being talked about. Um, I do think that it shouldn't be like a hasty decision in order to get one on the table because um, I think far too often uh, equity policies are like super bland statements and are hardly ever followed. Um, so what I would like to see is um, like in order for the policy to actually be effective, like including the voices of everybody who will be affected in the creation, I don't know if that would be like a committee or just like a form of some kind just to get people's opinion, um, I think that should include students too because the policy will be affecting them. And I think um, voices of marginalized people should be really centered in that because the policy will be impacting them the most. Um, but I think, I feel like the policy should um, include clear action steps that will be taken. So situations of oppression stop getting swept under the rug. 
Um, because of racial justice, we sent out a survey um, to students asking about like microaggressions. And a lot of students talked about how they reported stuff and none of it was dealt with, um, or how they stopped reporting stuff because it stopped being dealt with, um, and how disappointed they were with that. Um, and then I think the policy should also have like promised backing from the school board or another committee, I don't know exactly how that works, um, for equity training for all staff, um, so they can actually be getting that. Um, so I think it's a good first draft, and I, I'm glad it's uh, starting to be talked about, but it should not only be one draft, and there should be more talked about to, before it gets put to place. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else from the general public here? Sure. So, your equity policy and uh, part of the definitions. Oh, oh sorry, right. John Helfand, Roxbury, Brookfield. Uh, in the definitions on your equity policy, it says equity involves acknowledging and disrupting in inequitable practices, acknowledging biases, employing practices that reflect the reality that all students will learn in creative, inclusive, multicultural school environments for adults and children. So. That brings me to a book that is read in ninth grade English. It's called Poet X. I actually complained about it last year because it has a very, very strong overtones of uh, anti-religious bias. And it also, um, I think it glorifies um, children not obeying their parents. Um, and actually this year, <laughs> I found something out else in it that I didn't find last year. I'm going to read it right out of the book. His body grinds against mine, and it feels so good. I push away from him. I, I don't think our ninth graders need to be re reading uh, books that uh, talk about sexualization like that. Um, I don't think that's appropriate for them. Um, I think when it comes to the bias policy, um, I understand not teaching religion unless you're talking about a historical foundation of many religions in history, but I also think it's biased to say that religion is bad, and I don't think the school should be teaching that. And this book uh, definitely teaches that throughout. It's very anti-Christian, anti-Catholic. Um, I just want to bring it to the board's attention. I don't think it's an appropriate book for ninth grade English. I think there's better books out there that uh, that wouldn't push an agenda or bias. Thanks. Thank you. Can I speak? Uh, so I'm Ted Kelman. I live in Washington, Vermont, but I'm a teacher here um, at the high school. Um, and I, I just, I'll use a little bit of my time just to mention that someone just texted me from online and said they can't really hear us. So I'm not sure if anything could be done about that, but just reporting that. Um, yeah, and I, I just, I, I think like some of the other commenters, I am really glad to be at this meeting where the board is considering an equity policy. Um, I, I think it's, it's something that we desperately need. I share some of the concerns, I won't repeat them, about making sure that it's specific and actionable and something that we can actually use as a tool to address a really serious problem that we have right now. And that's really what I want to focus my comments on, is that we have every day kids being harmed at school um, by, I would say, a combination of intentional and unintentional uh, behaviors, but you know, in the, in the data that Sierra referenced that, that some of my students collected from about 150 of their peers, there were a disturbing number of kids reporting um, being targeted in, in various ways based on their sexual orientation or perceived sexual orientation or um, gender identity because of their race, their uh, religious affiliation, right? There's multiple instances of students who identify as Jewish being, um, having swastikas put into their field of vision in various ways. Um, and yeah, just want to echo the, the widespread perception among a lot of our kids that, uh, that the, what we have in place right now is not enough and that their perception is that there isn't accountability for these behaviors and a lot of kids reported kind of losing faith in the systems of reporting this kind of behavior. Um, you know, basically saying some version of, I don't, I don't even bother anymore because I know that nothing will happen. Um, so 
I would also urge the board, I'm not sure if this data is available, but I, it just crossed my mind to wonder how many students are no longer at this school because they couldn't take this kind of behavior anymore. Um, or, and, and you know, I, I, just as a teacher, I have to say, it is impossible for me to do my job if kids don't feel safe. Um, so just want to say again, I, I really appreciate that you all are looking at it. I, I think it, it is among the most important things that could be on your docket. And I, I also want to echo that uh, it, I hope this is a first step in, in, um, in really taking this, this problem seriously, because it, it feels like it, it really undermines our mission to serve every kid um, if, if there is this sort of systemic um, inability for us to, to keep all of our kids safe. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. How about online? Do we have? Uh, if any, anybody online would like to make a comment, please uh, put your hand up. Beverly, give me a second to find you. There you go. Um, my only comment right now is we can't comment on anything because we can't make out anything that's being said. So I don't know if audio can be addressed. Uh, from what I can see, things are connected well here. I'm happy to go see if I can find a tech. Oh, we can hear you, Lane. Yep. It's nobody out in the audience. Oh. It's all garbled. And, and anyone else speaking. Yeah, it might, it might just be the distance. I apologize for that, because um, they are sitting a bit far away. Okay. Can, you, can you still hear? I can hear you, okay. yes. How but about, not how about what me, anyone's Beth? What saying to respond to. Beth, can you hear me? No. Can you hear me, Bev? Let me see if Todd's around. Huh. Yeah, we had this problem with that owl. But when we had this problem, that pink light was on, that's the mute light. And yeah. I just tested that. And that right, did and that didn't fix, fix it. it. Right, that's why I was trying to see. Yes. Um, Todd's not in the. Which way did. Oh, he went so toward the. I just saw Todd walking down. Oh, he, okay. And I thought maybe he was in the tech room. It has been working fine in yeah, the past. I don't know. Well. Well, we had that. What was the meeting that we just had? Right, but it didn't work at but all. Heather and um, I oh, we, we <laughs> had it on mute by accident. Oh, and the owner. That was the ownership. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what it looks like when it's on mute. Okay. Yeah, so we thought that we'll meant it that. was on. Yeah. Yeah. We thought we thought it was. I thought it was just its power light. Right, right, right. Power's on. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like garbled, it's probably like a connection issue, right? Yeah. Just because I'm going to take off. Do you, do you have this already? Do you need copies? Uh, yes, I believe we have that. That's the side. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Were you able to find him? No, nah, I can try to give him a call if the signal's good in the building. He's mapping out the strength of the wireless around the building right now. So thank you. Yeah, because Ann Watson and, and Andrew Ehrlich will be yeah. coming on Remote. remotely. Can you get a hold of them and let me just check? And Chelsea. I, may, I might recycle it, turn it on and off and see if that helps. It was kind of hard to do the guess, I thought, just personally, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Just my. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder. Are you seeing something? I was hopeful that um, maybe when before he he clicked mute all, and I was wondering if it had muted the owl. Like, does the owl oh. have its own square up there? Does it? No. Oh yeah, yeah. Orca does. That's not the owl. That's not the owl? Could be. The O is orca. No, no, no. But see on the bottom oh, where maybe. we're all being, is, is that muted? No. There'd be a line through the mm -hmm. I think they wouldn't even be able to hear a lane, though. Right. Right. Well, they might be hearing the computer. No, I'm wondering if it's connected just to the mic on my computer and not the... I don't know. So Heather, have you yeah. got a stronger signal than I do here? 
What on my telephone? Yes, yeah, so you can call Todd. Sure. AT&T doesn't pick up some of the buildings. Yeah. Give me the number. Uh, 717. Hold on. Hold on. Let me catch up. You're fast. Okay, we're we're two minutes away. <laughs> um, or six twenty times. Yeah. So I may I may just put off our uh, committee thing. Our committee thing to after just because of technical issues. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And at the very least, for the legislators, well, for Jay, I guess, is the only one present. <coughs> Larry's on seated right next to Larry. Larry joined here. Right, but I mean, present yeah, yeah. in humanly body. Um, right. Right next to Lane. Or so. you can come right next to me. Wherever you want. I don't know well, no, I'm just I saying, if the audio there. trouble oh, continues, oh, that's right. where he should be. Yeah, these things, yeah. so you can sit in front of my computer if it helps. Because those feed into that. Wherever you want me. Right. How's everybody doing? We were doing okay <laughs> until we figured out our technology wasn't working. <laughs> 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 You'll respond. Yeah, and as far as I can tell, it's connected to it. it should be so. Um, folks on, online, I apologize. I'm going to shut the system off and turn it back on and see if that resets it. So um, give me about a minute and a half and then try logging in again. So I apologize. It'll be the same length. Yeah, same, yeah same, same link. That's not going to change. Shut the owl off, too. Isn't it funny? This only happens this once. And well, yeah. Do I have the time? It's just like no, it, did, it didn't fall apart until you walked in the door. Oh, is it because I changed the box? Right? <laughs> 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 But yeah. He was yeah. working for the first meeting, okay. Yeah, Finley was so excited when he saw you in the rest of yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> He literally looked so different. Yeah, no, he looks really good. And then next time I see him, he'll look even better. Even better, yeah. <laughs> like every week I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's eyes are coming on. It usually makes a noise. I didn't hear it make the boot sound. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah, that's, it even yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. that's a good sign. Do you guys see a colored light on your side on that thing? Yeah. Yep. If it's red, it's bad. If it's no color or blue, it's usually good. Uh, all right. Ann, talk. Can Beverly see if you can hear Bev, me? Bev, can you hear me? Am I clear? Bev, can you hear me? No. She's shaking her head. Yeah, I don't know if there's much I'm going to be able to do. Uh-oh. That is really... What happened? Uh, I, think it's, it I think it's just picking up through the computer microphone. <laughs> What if what if you put the owl over? No, that wouldn't do that. Now the mute. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, How about now, Bev? Um, it's a little bit better. It's um, at least it's not garbled, but it's it's still hard to hear. I'm not sure any of us online will be able to hear public comments. Um, we couldn't hear the other stuff. Hey, Lean, there's a there's a, a plus and a minus on that thing. Does that make a difference? Yeah, let me try to turn it up. Try try the hitting. Can we just the move it this way for plus. the public comment period. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's actually well, picking it up or if it's just the computer. You, I think. If they're he if they're hearing me well. Does that? I think it's just the computer lane. Yeah. Because. Right, try talking to right now. Yeah. Can you? How can? How am I coming in? Bev, can you hear me, Bev? No, she's not. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm figuring so I'll just go find Todd. Let's see if there's someone having a goal call vote tonight. Did you look at him back there? No, I don't think he's back there. I think he was down the hall. Blaine, you want me to find him? I can yeah. do with that. I'm not. My comments are even for a while. Uh, the worst case scenario is that people can actually that want to speak can actually sit right in the chair in front of the black computer. Um, yeah, well, I think we'll we'll because um, I asked the the legislators to be ready for six twenty, so we've heard from most everyone. I don't know if you folks wanted to speak. No. Um, so I don't know if Bev wanted to say something or yeah. just to say. Yeah. Bev, did you, were you it, wanting to say something in particular? And I, I think you should. Let yeah, me get, uh, yeah, you go there. Bev, did you want to say something in particular? <clears throat> I probably would have followed up on anything Tev said if I had heard what he said. So I'm going to say no but right now. But when comments are open again, probably. I didn't, okay. I sadly didn't get to hear Sierra on Nor, um, North Mother speak either. Okay. Um, and legislators, huh? I apologize for the technical. Uh, issues we're having um i think what we might do is we can hear you just fine what we can't what will happen is is that we can't you can't hear us um so i think we can move on to um at least have each one of you um introduce yourselves um, and actually, for this section of the meeting, my vice chair is going to be running this section. Um, so she'll come over and facilitate this section of the meeting. And um, hopefully, by the time we come to the question and answer section, we'll have the technology issue dealt with. <laughs> so I apologize for the. Um, inconvenience and hopefully um, this will all work so Katja I'm turning it over to you and um, all right uh, well thank you for being here tonight with us um, for this part of the meeting and we just wanted to give you an opportunity to present yourselves and um, especially for some of our legislators who haven't been to our orange southwest meetings before um, we're happy to have you here as representatives of Braintree, um, our little town here in Orange. And um, if you'd all like to just, like we said, present yourselves, um, give a little background to the work that you're currently doing, um, and then there'll likely be questions um, from the board members as well. And uh, we have Jay here. Do you want to? Sure, I'll start. Go first? Uh, so I'll get close to the computer so my colleagues can hear me. Uh, Larry Sackowitz and me, we, the two of us represent the five towns of Brookfield, Braintree, Randolph, Granville, and Roxbury. Uh, I am serving in my fourth term. Um, the last two terms, the last four years, I was on House Education. Uh, but now, 
I am thrilled to be on the Government Operations Committee, which includes uh, military affairs. Um, we're discussing a whole motley assortment of topics, including sports betting. Uh, we're taking on various bills in the way of solving technical corrections to election laws. Um, we are also discussing <coughs> jurisdiction and account accountability uh, as to the governance rules about sheriff's departments. We're doing, for the first time in modern legislative history, a deep dive into what it looks like to explore the rules around governing sheriff's departments uh, along, across the 14 counties in Vermont. Um, we've also uh, just welcomed two senators, uh, Cummings and McDonald. Um, I don't know if the two of them would want to come over here because of the they microphone. May, they, may have, they may have, that's where it's uh, Yeah, maybe. I'm Will you sure. check to see if it's fixed? Bev, can you tell us if this has been fixed yet for you? Can you hear us? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for everyone online. But, um, yes, could Perfect. just hear Anne. There's the bell. Perfect. Super. Yay. Good. So, okay. So, so everybody can stay where they are. We don't have to worry. So this owl-looking uh -huh. thing in the middle? <laughs> We're familiar. Okay. <laughs> So maybe maybe I would pass it to my uh, my my district mate Larry Sakowitz to introduce himself, or some somebody else in the room. Yep, I can, I can I can do that. Hello, everybody. So my name is Larry Sakowitz, and I'm one of the representatives with Jay for um, Randolph, Brooklyn, Braintree, Roxbury, and Granville. Um, I'm serving on the on the Environment and Energy Committee. Um, We've got three um, sort of big bills in front of us at the moment. Um, one of them is um, it's H-126, which is also known as the 30 by 30 bill. And it is a bill which would put Vermont on a path to conserving 30% of our natural landscape by 2030 and 50% by 2050 as part of a worldwide movement to sort of save our you know, worldwide biodiversity. Um, and then the other two bills that, that we're working on are both um, what's called extended producer responsibility bills, one um, for household hazardous waste. Right now, um, municipalities collect household hazardous waste and pay to dispose it with some help from the state. Um, but basically the onus of paying for all of this is on taxpayers. And one of the things that this bill would do would be to shift the responsibility for taking care of these materials at the end of their life um, to the manufacturers. Um, it's, it, there's more to it than that, but that's the big idea. Um, and then the other um, um, bill that we're working on, to, well, in fact, we worked on it quite a bit today, is um, what's called the bottle bill. Um, as you, I'm sure all of you know, we, you know, from lots of um, containers, we pay a five cent deposit on our bottles when we buy them, and then we get that back when we return them. Um, that bill was originally became law about 50 years ago, and it's been tweaked, but uh, this would be the first big uh, update um, really ever. And um, it, the biggest part of this, this update would be that it will include many more containers. Um, so water bottle containers, um, juice, certain kinds of juice containers, um, seltzers, all these things which really didn't exist or didn't exist in big numbers back in the 70s. Um, and so we're going to bring all those things into the bottle bill to uh, promote, um, you know, getting these things, you know, picked up off the streets, but also to recycle them far more efficiently than they're recycled now when they go through the single stream recycling um, with the big recycling companies. And I'm happy to pass it on to someone else. Someone in the room interested in? Um. I'd like to introduce uh, Ann Cummings, Senator Ann Cummings, who's chair of the Finance Committee. And maybe um, Senator Cummings will tell us about the meeting we had today dealing with CLA yes. and tax rates. Yes. Hi, I'm Ann Cummings. Um, I do chair the Finance Committee, and Senator McDonald has been my vice chair and clerk since forever. Um, 
I also serve on the Housing and Economic Development Committee. So I spent this morning working on a bill to help with the housing crisis. Um, it is statewide. It's pretty perpetual, but it does have some changes to stay at the town zoning ordinances and also at this point to Act 250. So we're working our way through that. This afternoon, um, along with trying to figure out how to pay for child care and paid family leave and a few other things that are floating around out there, um, we took a look at the impact of the rapid increase in housing prices um, that uh, and what possible impact that's going to have on um, the property tax bill of individual uh, taxpayers. We're still working at getting our head around it. it, it there's a lot of moving um, pressure if uh, basically what we heard is all things remaining equal, it shouldn't hurt um, because the CLA has kept up the, the relative values and if your, you know, your uh, grand list goes up, if you're raising the same amount of money, which nobody ever does, then your tax rate should go down and individuals should be, it should equal out. Um, but there's a lot of variables in there. That's if your house goes up in value as the average house in your town goes up. If it goes higher, um, then you may not uh, benefit. We were especially looking at people who are income sensitized and you're only income sensitized up and it decreases over time but up to four hundred thousand dollars in housing value. Well if your house was worth 250 last year and it's worth 500 this year what's that going to do to your bill and um, I think we're, we're trying to at this point discover if there is going to be a problem and if there is what kind of lever we can pull. We know that there is a cap of $5,600 on your tax bill that you can receive, no, um, and it's possible that that could come to impact folks So as the values go up. So we may, you know, we can raise that, we can raise the housing value. Um, there's a lot of things in there that we can tweak, but we're looking at it. Um, interested to know what you know you're looking at here. Um, the yield is going to go up. You're going to get a lot more per penny on the tax rate because your grand list is higher. But um, it'll be a mixed bag, and we're we're still looking at trying to find a way to work with that. Yeah, so actually, it's a good question. So, the school on the school side of things, um, we brought things down between six and seven cents per hundred dollars of assessed value. But when you add in the CLA changes, at least in this area, um, the average household, if it's a three hundred eighty-five thousand dollar household, is looking at probably about a five hundred dollar increase overall. Increase, okay. Um, per annum, just to put put a ballpark figure on things. So, okay. Yeah. CLA being. The common, common level, level of appraisal, appraisal yeah. which is the state program, sure. and we also know that we have over a hundred uh, towns right now that are, are, need to be reappraised. We know that you can't get appraisers. Um, the House Ways and Means Committee is looking at perhaps doing some kind of a regular appraisal, which would make it cost-effective for appraisers to have enough teams on if you have to wait 10 years between appraisals then they can't afford to maintain the staff so um, you may see some changes coming there and um, actually it's a, a good point to just so I'm being accurate with folks so uh, Randolph and Braintree would see see about a $500 increase on the average priced home um, Brookfield, because it reappraised last year, would actually be getting money back. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you've reappraised recently, the addition we got, we were looking at numbers they took from South Burlington, which is not your typical Vermont town today. Um, and they had just reappraised just before this. Um, Burlington, on the other hand, hadn't reappraised in 11 years. Um, and yeah, some people's housing had just gone up unbelievably and they did, they did get hit. So we're going to, the goal has always been, and I'll cede to Senator McDonald, he is our resident expert on Act 60, but the goal has always been to have the majority of, of people pay based on their income and to have that percentage of your income limited and um, we're going to keep trying to do that. Thank you. We've got our work cut out for us, and uh, we haven't seen appraisals, uh, property values go up this steeply in a decade and a half. And there's a section of state government property evaluation and review that looks at the various town by town by town and offers us some advice on how to equalize as if the sales hadn't taken place so that there's less sticker shock, and that'll probably be our number one issue before town meeting trying to get that be able to give the town some assurance on what's like what things are likely to be we've been here before on that one but it's oh, been a while I'm sure this is my first time here but it's not my first time before a school board <laughs> okay. I serve on uh, natural resources and we were taking uh, testimony on on heat and um, and those uh, entities that sell the heat that that we use in our homes and trying to uh, deal with a way to to react to some of the high prices that we're seeing that have been caused both by by um, the, the war in Ukraine and and the fossil fuel uh, the oil companies um, who have raised prices because they can mm -hmm. and and those of us that, that use oil to, to augment other sources are um, stuck with the way it is until there something changes. So, but glad to answer any questions. And um, have the have the senators and, re and representatives yeah. online had a chance to weigh in? Okay. Are we, yeah, Andrew or Ann? Welcome to introduce yourself. I'm um, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna jump in here unless you want to go, Senator Perchlik. Um so, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, um, so I serve on uh, the Senate Natural Resources and Energy alongside Senator McCormick there, uh, uh, McDonald there. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's good, good to see you um, there as well as Ann Cummings and uh, representatives as well. So um, in addition, I'm also serving on the uh, Government Hi. Operations <laughs> Committee. And so that, uh, group is doing a few things sort of simultaneously uh, right now. We are working on uh, sheriff reforms uh, as well as uh, ranked choice voting uh, as well as uh, dispatch issues. So uh, the sort of three sort of separate things. Happy to, to go into any of those in further detail. But one of the things that I think is most relevant for you all is that um, uh, we did pass uh, H42, which was uh, an amendment to the open meeting law. Uh, it was really an extension of uh, the COVID provisions for open meeting law that would allow, uh, for example, school boards to meet entirely remotely if uh, that is what you uh, wanted to do. And that goes through um, uh, July 1st of next year. So. Um, and then we have a, a bill sort of pending that is looking at uh, what permanent changes we may want to make to the open meeting law uh, coming out of uh, COVID, we hope, right? So that we've learned some things and we may want to put some of the, those learnings in um, permanently into the, the open meeting law. So that's, um, uh, I think relevant for you all. The other thing that I, I should mention is that my day job is that I am a teacher. I teach high school physics, engineering, and math at Montpelier High School in the Montpelier Roxbury School District. 
Um, and so I am uh, happy to, to be there and uh, uh, working for uh, public education uh, in the building. So uh, I'm happy to, to answer, answer any questions you might have. I'll, I'll go. So the, I'm Andrew Perchlick. Uh, this is my third term representing the Washington District and glad to have these new towns in the district and, and meet new people. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. You're well represented by the two senators there and Representative Hooper. Um, I, it's first two terms I served on transportation and education, so I got a, a good lesson in, in Vermont education laws and policies. This year, I was moved to the Appropriations Committee, but still have an interest in education policy and interested in, in talking to you about that all. I do have to say I have a League of Women Voters event that I have to go to at seven. I really should be there early, earlier because so I'm presenting, but so I won't be able to stay for the whole question and answer, but uh, Senator Watson and Cummings can, and McDonald can represent the Senate pretty well on these things. At just on education, uh, we in appropriations, we haven't talked to specifically about education issues yet, but in transportation, we talked about school bus drivers and uh, issues around having to have CDL licenses and the issues around, I don't know if this has been a problem in your district, but we heard from other districts that it's been difficult to find CDL drivers. There was one principal that said, well, if we can't hire one, I'll get the CDL license. And he had to take the test five times because it was it was much more than just what you might think you need to know about riding a school bus. So we're going to look at that. We don't know because of federal regulations and obviously wanting to make sure these school bus drivers are keeping our children safe. But we're going to look and see if there's anything that can be done to still have safety be number one, but make it maybe a little easier for some of these districts to get a, a bus drivers. <laughs> But so those are those are the that's the one education thing uh, we've we've come up so far. But mainly it's bridges and roads and how we're electrifying our transportation future and how we're going to keep our bridges and roads going as we do more electric vehicles and as we look at public transportation and how we can do that in a more uh, innovative ways. So that's it for me, and thanks for inviting us. For the introductions, um, do we have any questions from the board? Regarding any topics? Well, I have a question. <laughs> um, just um, the condition of school buildings. So um, earlier, um, our district, our high school, and tech center were listed as in the worst condition of all the facilities. <laughs> in the state and um, given that we have infrastructure money hopefully coming in from the national infrastructure bill i'm just curious what kinds of things are happening at the state level to be ready to be able to use those monies to maybe help uh, allow towns to consider renovating or rebuilding if needed um, yeah, I'm probably going to punt this ball over to Senator Perchlet for transportation. Um, we know we have a problem. We built a lot of schools. They're all now relatively the same age and they're all deteriorating. We are testing for the PCBs and the Finance Committee um, last year put aside $32 million, which has nothing to do with what it will cost to clean them up if we find them, but was the most money we could put away just to have something. We had um, a lot of money in the Ed Fund last year because people spent their stimulus and went out and bought things, and sales tax is one of our main revenue sources. But we're, we know that's probably one-time money, so we've put that aside. We know that schools are going to need help. There is a facility study that is due in, is it next November? It's, it's October. It's October. And so I think 
that they're kind of waiting to see that to figure out what do we have to do. We used to bond to build schools. I was actually on institutions when we stopped that because most of our bonding capacity had, had been used up and we really needed to pay it down. Um, so we would have some. Um, our bonding capacity has greatly been re reduced. There's a board that makes that decision how much we can bond for. So we're going to be working through that and trying to come up with a way because if you all just do it and you go out and take the loan, it's going on the cost of education and it's going to get spread over all of us anyway. So all I can tell you is we know it's a problem. We're working on it. That's become my motto this year. We're working on it. <laughs> I'll just add that I, I worked on the the bill and education that did the inventory and then this assessment that's due in, in October that they're going to be doing it. They're doing it now. And then over the summer, and we're going to report back the total cost of all the deferred maintenance and all the schools. And we know it's going to be a huge number. Also, I started conversations with the state treasurer, our neutral state treasurer is interested in how, how can the state be involved looking at what other, some other states have done to, to support, just keep, you know, not modernizing schools, just keeping them open and at a basic standard. Because we, you know, we heard a lot of testimony in education last year about some of the really uh, in a, unacceptable state of some of our school buildings. And that's really getting in the way of learning. We spent a lot of federal money on the ventilation systems. I don't know if your school was one of those schools. And we still have several million dollars there. So ventilation and HVAC, a lot of federal money has gone into that. There, there's some competitive grants that schools can apply to for federal money, but there isn't other infrastructure money so far that's just more grant money. So it is going to, and if it is, it's going to be small, not small compared to the need. So I think the state is going to have to kind of think about how we can bond for, for it and how we would do that and how we would set up a new program. That's going to definitely be a discussion in the next couple of years. Um, I actually do have a question about um, universal school meals and just how food security is such an important topic right now and looking forward to that, what that will look like in the future for our students. I probably can take that because that was the second topic we spent this afternoon on. Um, Life at the Ed Fund is getting back to normal and we aren't looking at the surpluses. I think everybody wants to feed every child, um, but there, because we need money to uh, half offset tax rates and all kinds of other things in the Ed Fund, um, there's some concern about feeding children that perhaps parents can afford to feed them, but nobody wants <coughs> the lines where um, you, um, you know, kids get to stand out and get to be humiliated and won't eat because you can't do it. Um, so we looked at it. Um, the study is in. The last year we were told we thought we were undercounting the number of kids eligible for federal aid. Well, it hasn't turned out that way either. Parents still aren't filling out the forms, but it looks like, um, you know, that a lot of kids are, are eating. Reports are there's really good results in schools. Kids are happy. They're, you know, they're better off. Um, but it is going to continue to cost us between 27 and 31 million dollars a year um, to do that. So that's another place where we're. I, there, there's no intention to stop feeding children. I think if we can find a way that parents that can afford to pay, my daughters tell me that school lunch is the best deal in town, um, that, and I, I happen to think breakfast is a good deal just because it decreases family stress when you're trying to get everybody out the door by 7.30, 8 o'clock. But, um, 
if, if we can find a way that we can do it, um, but also guarantee that, that your, your food service stays solvent, um, we'll do it. But we're not going to stop feeding kids. Um, you know, if we can't find a way to, to feed some kids for free and some kids not, then we'll just keep feeding everybody for free. Uh, I had a, actually kind of an add-on to that, and not, not so much that about the, the universal uh, meals per se, but as, as kind of a potential unintended you know, consequence of it that I just want to make sure is on, on people's radar. Um, much of the funding that we get um, is based upon the percentage of students and families in our district. Um, that are fiscally challenged, and the way that you know they determine those percentages are with the free and reduced lunch forms. Um, I think one of the unintended impacts of the universal free meals is that folks have stopped filling out the forms a little bit. It was also hard to get them to to fill it out even prior to that, just because there's a, a stigmatization kind of associated yeah. with it. And so one of the things that just to put on folks' radar is: is there an easier way to collect that data? We were yeah. told that there were new forms that were not going to be stigmatizing yeah. <laughs> and easier. But I also know that getting things home to parents and getting them back, I mean, I've had children come home with things safety pinned to their clothes to make sure that I got them. Yeah. Um, there is a, there is a sometimes problems in that delivery stream. and. I think, yeah, we all hope that the forms would come back. They haven't. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's, because it's a, it's a federal regulation. And, yeah. you know, again, if we can use infrastructure for schools, it's a federal regulation. And I haven't heard school repairs mentioned. I know we do broadband, so broadband is in there. But, um, Right. It, 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 if you can help us figure out an easier way. The, the tricky thing is that it's the federal government that makes the rules as to how we collect the data. That's right. That form is something that is distributed every four years. And this is one of those four years. So the deadline has passed for school districts to collect basically the, the poverty data that would have uh, schools collecting as many federal and state dollars leverage as they could, which, it, uh, as okay. Senator Cummings says, it's, it's an unfortunate thing. If we could have a better way of collecting that data, we would pursue it, but it, it, it's a federal, they're federal, federal yeah, government rules. Yeah, which may make sense. And, and I don't know if the, I think one of the worries too mm -hmm. is that, you know, with the new, new weightings, um, with the kind of the ed funding changes that are being considered and being put into place, you know, one of the weightings is poverty, and mm -hmm. so that's using the free and reduced lunch counts as well. Which you know, is, it's and the, those students do not have to fill out those forms. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing finance didn't do was waiting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Thanks. that is going to have some major impacts on some schools. Um, and some of them are somewhat counterintuitive. I've got one traditionally poor school that's not going to see any increase, and I've got one that I would think perceptively is a, a wealthier district that is going to see an increase because they're more rural. Yeah. So there is rational thought behind these weights when they looked into them they were done in the 1950s and there was no record of why or how the way they they were just a couple people sitting around a table and said well I think it costs this and I think it costs that and everybody was happy and that's the way it came down um, it's got a more rational basis now but may not we may not have gotten it exactly right so um we're, we're waiting to see how it plays out and please keep telling us how it plays out or doesn't for you no i appreciate it i think i'll just add um 
to that universal school meals is that I sitting on a number of hunger councils as well and working with the food bank the recognition that that form is a barrier for um, for programs like this um, I think is seen as far as yeah. other organizations see that it is causing some additional prevention of that program being able to really um, fulfill the needs of the students. Is, is there a committee that communicates with the federal government about what the states are seeing? No. <laughs> Write your congressman. Um, <laughs> Senator Welch is on the Agriculture right, Committee and they have a lot of weight on, yeah. Yeah, on that, on school and, meals. And he's responsive. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's responsive. I would do that. Sure. And the governor's office probably has more direct input than we do. But the last legislative session, we did fund a third fiscal school year of universal meals, despite not having a concrete plan as to how we would make it permanent. So that is indeed on the agenda for the yeah. Well, I think when finance put it in, my words were, you don't feed kids for one year and then it's stop feeding them. Right, if right. we're going to do this, we need to assume it's a permanent cost. Yeah. And we if would, we, we would find some way... We would hate to signal to school districts that you'd have to go back to a, yeah. an antiquated. I haven't heard anyone saying that. Um, I don't know. Maybe the so House is. is. <laughs> Maybe. The, uh, the chair had uh, our, t our people that do research on, on revenues in today, and we're looking at um, soda, um, sugar. Um, yeah. Some of us want to do diet soda. Three million. Yeah flavored water um, there's folks are making a lot of money selling sugar and water and putting different titles on it and running good TV ads and there may be some revenues there so my committee is discussing legalizing sports betting which would be about 10 to 12 million dollars per year by the time the market uh, the estimate I heard today was four four uh, okay well <laughs> I'll be advocating to put that money towards universal school meals. That is one source of revenue that's out there. That's and then, of potential. course, um, last session we discussed uh, what's known as a cloud tax, which yeah. is basically um, if you purchase a software uh, that allows you to sell a product over the Internet in Vermont, um, you'd have to pay a tax on that purchase which would be, I think, akin to the it's, sales tax? It's it? TurboTax. Turbo? If you buy TurboTax in a box, if you can even do that anymore, you pay a sales tax. If you buy your computer and you want TurboTax in the package, they give you a card, you pay for it, you go online, there's a sales tax. But now you can go on TurboTax's platform, do your taxes in the cloud, and you pay for that service. It's a service, um, but you don't pay a sales tax on that. And um, I have committed that the Finance Committee, because usually this has come over to us like the last week in April when we're supposed to be going home, um, that we have started to take a look at it because we're not just trying to fund school meals. We've got child care, which has a 273, yeah, it's got a lot of hundred millions. Um, we have paid family leave out there. We have uh, school meals along with just inflation. And so we're, I, I told, Today, we're going to look at all the revenue sources we can get. We're going to wait till all the bills get here, and then we're going to see what we can pay for and how we may need to tweak the bills. To I doubt that we're going to be able to find a way to pay for everything everybody wants. Yeah. It's just not that kind of money here. <laughs> And um, just want to be mindful of everyone's time and appreciate everyone's time here tonight. So, are there any other questions that the board has? Or I have a question. Yeah. Are you taking a driver's test, and can you beat that guy from uh, <laughs> Waterbury? And how long it takes to get the, the bus driver's license? <laughs> oh, we're we're in a, a different boat, I think, than most districts. Um, and this was long before my time. We're one of the few districts that still maintains its own bus fleet. 
And so our crew up there can actually train anybody who wants to be a bus driver and they get their CDL certification right through us. Well, we don't want to so. be beaten by uh, yeah. you know, no. Harvard <laughs> Union. <laughs> You start Who knows how to drive a bus? Okay. <laughs> yeah, my grandkids have a day off from school because there's no bus driver. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? None? Come on. Lane, Lane are there any other things Sorry. that you want the yeah. them to uh, the, the understand only, the impacts of state rules? Yeah, I, I, you touched on the, the, the two big ones. Um, you know, one of them was, you know, was school construction aid. Right, you know that's a big thing, and and so you know the buildings are are, are well maintained as as well as they can be. I think ours ours was was as part of the first study that happened last year was considered the closest to the end of its useful life um, at this point in time. And it's funny we're like uh, we're like uh, a used car with you know a quarter million miles on it. Every month it's a big bill for something, um, and so we're kind of in that place. So we're we're. Had, had an initial discussion earlier this year about, you know, possibly redoing this campus. Um, but, you know, a lot of it rests upon kind of what might come out of the legislature. You know, is there going to be matching funds? If there is, you know, and so those are the kind of the things that we're waiting for at this point in time. The only other thing that hasn't been discussed that I would bring up very quickly is um, uh, funding for tech education. Because um, we have a regional technical center here. Um, and one of the things that has hurt us, which was actually a benefit at one time, was, was how we get funded for that. Um, when enrollments were dropping in Vermont, um, it looked like uh, they had put in rules so that as enrollments were dropping, the funding that we get is based upon, you know, the average number of kids that we have coming here. They did that average over three years, right? So as numbers drop, you were still getting a significant yeah. chunk of money. We've been in kind of the reverse state for a number of years where our enrollments have been going up, um, both district and at the tech center. And so we found ourselves in a horrible position last year where we had 160 kids at the tech center, but we're only getting um, funding for 124 of them. And it was going to take three years for that well, average to we've catch We've done up. rolling averages on almost every, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it, there, there was a really good purpose behind it, as far as mm -hmm. I can tell, um, at one time, and that was because enrollments were going down. But it's had kind of a, a negative effect in terms of, of being able to fund properly without our tuitions go through the roof as our enrollments have climbed back up. Okay. Well, I did look at the agenda for house education today. I think they were taking testimony from some personnel from the state of Rhode, Rhode Island regarding their school construction costs. Last I checked, which was 2019, I think it was about $600 million that we were looking at for the state of Vermont collectively uh, on our horizon as to what, what kind of changes we need to make to antiquate school buildings. I imagine that cost would be larger today, I don't know. Probably double. <laughs> double? Well, given no. what we heard about housing, the house that the contractor did like four years ago for two hundred and sixty thousand dollars is now costing him over six hundred to build, and it's basically cost of material and labor, but it's material. Lane, do you guys have good fire insurance here? <laughs> <laughs> so, don't you might want to a system. Um, the state of Massachusetts has put in a, a school building authority. They called it the SBA, um, and so they had had a moratorium on on uh, providing kind of matching construction funds uh -huh. for years, and they brought that uh, system, that group online. And what they really did is they recognized there was only a limited amount of money that they could put towards helping districts out each year. Yeah. And so what they really were, uh, they actually did two things. Um, they really kind of would take applications from districts and they would prioritize them. You, know, you, guys, you guys are the top ten this year, so you're getting the funding to be able to do, do, do your work. Um, they also did a lot to um, streamline the process to speed up the permitting um, and whatnot. And then to control costs, they also um, went into detail about the types of materials and things that could be used in, in construction. Um, and so I don't know if that's a good model to potentially look at if people do, do go down that path. But. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
we'll have to get you up to so possibly. Yeah. I think we did that with construction. It was, I came in as we were shutting it down, but there was a certain amount of bonded capacity, and you got on a list and got evaluated, and, yep. and yeah, we. The trick is going to be yeah. coming up with the, the seed money to yeah. do it. Uh, if, you, if you only got limited yeah. funds, that might be a way to yeah. do it so that you're always taking care of the most that need. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it. I, everybody is kind of waiting for the end of all the testing and the so that we know what we're looking at and then we have some idea of yeah. what the cost might be. But we know it's going to be awful. <laughs> Well, thank you to the school board for the yeah. work that you do, and thanks for having us. And uh, we look forward to visiting again soon and answering any more questions. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. 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 Thanks, Senator Watson. Thanks. Thanks. Donald. Jay, get out. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For coming. All right. Thanks, Representative Sacklitz. Thank thanks, you. Larry. Have a good night, Larry. And Andrew, and Ann and Andrew. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Thank you for pulling down to learn about yes, the school district. We appreciate that. Yeah. This is, I'm, I'm a retired realtor. I've sold houses in this town. I've been saying I've made this trip regularly. So. Oh, oh, perfect. You've made oh. money off us. Come on, give us some more money. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I know why I know that name. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've been down. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Have a good evening. Good to see you. Okay. Um, so we are going to move back now to um, our ownership linkage committee report. Um, and that was uh, Katya and uh, Heather. So yeah. Kasha is the committee chair so and Heather's. The only thing that we have to report out on this is we are having our regular monthly meetings now of the Ownership Linkage Committee, and we had some um, good discussion at our last meeting. But um, I want Heather to just discuss more about upcoming this portion of a graduate project that's ongoing. We are looking for some support and um, that the board will be a part of this and actually attend some of the discussions that are happening. So Heather. Talk yes, about uh, absolutely. So we did um, receive the title funded amendment for the federal funds to um, retain up for learning to facilitate and lead a group of student leaders um, or, well a group of students are going to attend leadership training tomorrow, February 9th. Um, and then subsequently we have a series of launch events. Um, these students are going to be asked to create a larger group called the Portrait of a Graduate Team, which will be about 30 people, both adults and students. And we need that group to meet on March 3rd, March 9th, April 18th, and May 2nd. So the ask is that we would like to have at least one board member um, at those Portrait of a Graduate meetings. They are from 8 to noon on those dates. So again, those dates are March 3rd, March 9th, April 18th, and May 2nd. Sorry. <laughs> I need the dates one more time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> March 3rd, March 9th. A Friday, a Thursday. April 18th, and May 2nd. It'll be in the minutes. Thank you, Hannah, for your telling the days of the week. Yes, it went <laughs> Friday, Thursday. Oh man! <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday. Are there you more than for four? Be the same, the same person, or just a, any board member on any day? It does not need to be the same oh, okay. person. I mean, sure. in a in a dream world, that would be great. But that I, we'd love board representation. Yep. At all of these, and if it's if you're able to make all of them, phenomenal. If you can only make one, we would love to have you there. Perfect. Um, I think it would probably be helpful if we send out some sort of like sign up for the day so that mm -hmm. everyone has it in their calendar, um, and we can know which board members will be present. Perfect. So who is gonna do the? So who will send out the sign up? Heather and I will take care of it. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Okay. Linda. Thank you. And so everybody understands the ask is to sign up for at least one of those 
four days. Mm -hmm. And on the 9th, do you need? No, board? February 9th will be um, students. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we that's have some school counselors um, okay. and the facilitators from Up for Learning. Excellent. That's great. Awesome. So that is getting ready to go. <laughs> That's so exciting. Really cool. And so once, yeah. so so that it'll be interesting to see, you know, from there, they what they plan. You know, community evenings and dinners and outreach activities in various forms to get um, student involvement and families involved and parents and com uh, community members, employers will. It'll be interesting to let them take the lead on that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's as much as I have right now is these is these dates that we have structured and set aside for the work. And Excellent. I'm totally understanding because I know that this is a, a big ask for a daytime, you know, mm -hmm. hours during the day. Mm -hmm. So there will be other opportunities, as Heather mentioned. Yes. Um, for maybe evening events, dinners, mm -hmm. things like that, that board members can attend if you're not able to um, come to the daytime events. Because understandable. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. But if we can at least get at least one person to each one of these four dates during the day that would be great if we can spread it with the idea of by the end of june or yes uh, having having yes. our portrait ready yes so there will be multiple outreach to the community so as katja mentioned there'll be evening events throughout the board members could attend as well. And that's all the update on that. Thank you. Okay, awesome. It was great meeting with the students today. Okay. So next up we have um, just the review. So this is the first run through of the monitoring reports. Uh, EL 2.3 and 2.6. Lane, you want to? Yeah, I just um, first, it's the first read, so just um, general kind of overview uh, executive limitation 2.3 financial conditions activities. Um, in general, it's it's about ensuring that you know we're using the money monies that are in the budget for their intended purposes, um, that we're paying our bills on time, and that if there's any money owed to us, that we're collecting it in a, in a reasonable time frame. Um, 2.6 is asset protection, and I think the name kind of <laughs> says what it's about. It's it's about making sure that the the district is protecting you know its financial assets, its facilities, because um, those are assets as well as well as our equipment. And that's typically either through our processes and protocols or for li through liability insurance. Uh, and then, oh sure. I think it was on 2.6. There's a rouge employee instead of a rose employee. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, as I can't remember older, where. I'm tired of my eyes. Are... No, it's just one transposition of letters. What, page, what, page, what uh, provisions it under? Uh, I'm trying to find it. It gives uh, us some flair. Provision number two. Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It gives it a little flair. <laughs> a rouge employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2.6, provision number two. Gotcha. Under the interpretation. Sorry, go ahead again. Okay, uh, so the next thing, um, again, Lane, you're going to be um, going out to the community with some open forums just explaining the budget. Yeah, I got to send a, another update tonight later. Um, meant to get the reminder out earlier today, but we had a lot of events going on, as I'm sure people are aware. Um, so it's, it's budget season um, at this point in time. And so I always make the effort to go and kind of have separate meetings in each of the communities just to have that discussion about the budget. Um, we've also been discussing um, and trying to get feedback through listening sessions with the community on a, a draft homework policy that we have. And then it's, as always, it's kind of the open forum at the end, anything that's on, on people's minds. Um, the first in the, the series for this month um, actually happened last week in Brookfield. Uh, that was on February 2nd. Um, the second is tomorrow night in Braintree at 6.30 p.m. Um, the third is next week on the 16th, and that'll be at 7 p.m. right here in the, the Media Center. Um, and that's the last week before vacation. 
Um, in addition, for folks that are, are trying to be informed when they go to vote on, uh, is it March 7th or March 6th? 7th. Um, on March 7th, um, <laughs> right. about Down the budget, what we're asking <laughs> for and why we're asking for it, there is also the, the state required annual budget meeting. Um, that'll happen on March 1st at 6 p.m. Um, here at RUHS. And then uh, we'll have the annual meeting the night before the vote. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about budget and can answer you know, questions about it at that time as well. Um, and all this stuff um, has been going out in community uh, emails and we'll continue to do so on a weekly basis just to keep people reminded. Um, and we are requested, obviously, to attend the uh, annual meeting, correct? Annual meeting, yep. Yeah, yes. uh, they, they do vote on things like the school officers, like mm -hmm. the treasurer, um, that sort of thing, and the clerk, and yeah. So the dates again, you already have They're been the in the, of the agenda. Yeah. No, but the Brookfield one, he didn't. Oh. Uh, Brookfield, you Brookfield, did February 2nd. Brookfield, we had 2nd. last week, um, February 2nd. February 9th. Tomorrow's Brain Tree. Tomorrow's Brain Tree. Tree. And then, oh, where is I don't think I put the open forums no, on there. No, you didn't put, put the, them on yeah, there. The she put the, the regular the meetings. meetings. The Randolph one will be here um, on the 16th. On the 16th, so yeah. February 16th. And, but you'll be sending those out to the community yeah. as well? Yeah, they've been out once or twice, and I, mm -hmm. I've got to do a reminder today, um, a final reminder for Brain Tree tomorrow. Do you yeah. put that in the paper, too, or not? I haven't. I usually, I try to do, I always do the our broadband email. I try to yeah. get it on front porch form when I can remember okay. um, as well, because that, um, especially for some reason, Brookfield tends to rely on the, the front porch form. Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting in talking with folks. So did you have many people show up for uh, Five or six, okay. which isn't bad. Um, what I've noticed happen over time is that as we kind of communicate more with the emails and explain things through that, the attendance at meetings has gone down. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that, that I, I do do, I didn't mention it, um, is that as part of the annual report, my writings are about the budget, what we're looking for. Right, right. And so what I also do is uh, probably a week or two before the vote is I break that up into usually a two or a three part series and send it out to the community so they got that information mm -hmm. again. And it's all, all just about informing people. Uh, right, yeah. right. Great. So Braintree, be ready uh, for tomorrow night. Okay. So those are our and they're the same discussions at each each of the three meetings yeah. this month. Yeah, yeah just so sharing that. So if you've been to one, it'll be the same when you go to the right. others. If you but do. it might be easier for board members that are from certain communities to so just pop over to theirs rather than yeah. go to somewhere else. Um, okay. Uh, so next up we have um, two monitoring self-evaluation uh, self-evaluations to do as a board. Um, last time we tabled um, 4.6 for um, this meeting, and we also were going to go ahead and do 3.0 for this meeting, um, just so that we would stay on track with our monitoring, and plus 3.0 is very simple. Um, it's just one line. So hopefully everyone had the opportunity to um, look at 4.6 that was um, uh, evaluating our policy regarding how we work as uh, board committees. Somebody else want to go through this other than me? <laughs> or You do a great job, Ann. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll just say that I feel like this was an always one for me for the most part because we've haven't had very many committees like subcommittees that have come out and the ones that I feel that we have had have all been adhering to um, these these principles um, yeah did anybody see any issues with this maybe that's the way we should do it is as you looked over um, I had most of the time because I think we our ownership linkage committee we just sort of we didn't put any end date to it, and isn't there something about putting an end date in at some point? Oh, time limited. You know, I think it's helpful to read the... To read through the I policy, do. just so that people are aware. 
So I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. So board committees, when used, will be assigned so as to reinforce the wholeness of the board's job and so as never to interfere with delegation from board to superintendent. So um, how have we done on that? Did everybody, did anyone see, were we not doing that? Reinforcing the wholeness of the board? Our committee's taking the superintendent's job. I don't think so. No. Um, so accordingly, number one, Board committees are to help the board do its job, not to help advise to, to help or advise the staff. Committees ordinarily will assist the board by preparing policy alternatives and implications for board deliberation. In keeping with the board's broader focus, board committees will normally not have direct dealings with current staff operations. And I said yes, that one issue with that is our negotiation committees because in a way we are advising the administration in those, which is kind but of the, the... But the but contract the is with us, with us. Mm -hmm. not with... Mm -hmm. the, the administration is... That's true. That, yeah, us. okay, yep. Yeah. Yep, so that's a and better way that, of looking at it. Because when I came to this one, I was like, uh oh, we kind of advise. I think that's something that more, needs to be uh, yeah. reiterated every time there's a negotiation session, that it's actually with us, mm -hmm. with a ton of help from the person who can actually give us the information we need to consider. Um, but I think it's it's something to be reminded mm -hmm. every year, mm -hmm. um, especially when there are new committee members to either one. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So is there uh, something that you think, do you think we need to make, do we just need to remind ourselves of that when we, when we get those committees going, or do we need to make any policy changes? No, because I think this policy and this, um, you know, number two specifically has to, uh, no, one. One. Um, is about when, it, it because that's directly, because those committees are directly between the board and the staff, it's almost the exception to the rule. So I don't think a change is necessary. Okay. The end. It's a long explanation. Okay. <laughs> Anyone have any yeah. other calls? Any? Should this be reviewed? Like we form those committees after elections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should this be reviewed as those committees are formed, so that it's a reminder as the committees are formed, or should it be reviewed when negotiations when begin? When that committee convenes. So it should be. So should it be reviewed not this time of year, but you know, when do they usually begin? Like October, usually in September. The, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. So when we're when we're actually doing the self evaluation for this yes. particular. Yes. Well, right. but I would actually say when people are being assigned to committees, so that they understand what they're. But role we're going to have what different committees through the throughout the year. Yeah. Those are just committees that are that are kind of standing. Right. Right. Like but people are appointed before the negotiations begin. That's right. right. Yeah, that's right. right. After, after the so when we do the And it often meeting. has to do with someone offering to be on it. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'll do it. Can someone give me the Cliff Notes version on how you get assigned to a committee? Basically, volunteer. You when you volunteer. Or you get volunteered. <laughs> you get volunteered. Or you get volunteered. You get volunteered. I'm on it. <laughs> the negotiation committees often people choose to stay on them yeah, because they've been right. through the process, right. which is very, very helpful. Yeah. Because they're not right. supposed to happen this frequently in no. negotiations. No. Yeah. It's yeah. just, just because of COVID and with the, the changes in the state yeah. health, health laws, they've been fairly sure. frequent. And MOUs and stuff, yeah. 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 We'll find one for you, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get you on. on <laughs> okay, so moving on to number two, board committees may not speak or act for the board except when formally given such authority for specific and time-limited purposes. Expectations and authority will be carefully stated in order not to conflict with authority delegated to the superintendent. Um, I felt like we were doing that always. 
Yeah, we're very good about saying what it's for. Right. Although the time limit, we didn't say when we would we would cancel and when that ownership linkage committee will be done, but it's the first time we've had one, and we're still sort of making our way with that committee. So I think. Yeah, and the fact know. that we haven't said it will be for these three months or whatever is. I, mean, I don't even know if that would have a time limit because we will always have owners. We will always have owners. So yeah. So if that may be a perpetual, it just may change and shift the work that we're doing. Yeah. Or we'll get better at it because it's our role. Our job was to, is to make our plan. So once the committee has made the plan. And it doesn't carry it out. The board as a whole carries it out. So, and approves it. So, but we're still. This is the first year we've ever tried to make an ownership linkage plan. <laughs> we haven't yet done it yet. So we'll we'll see. So, um, I'm giving us some slack on that one. Uh, number three, board committees cannot exercise authority over staff beyond the bounds of typical support functions for committees with assigned staff. Because the superintendent works for the full board, he or she will not be required to obtain the approval of a board committee before an executive action. Um, yep. I'm, I'm going to turn to <laughs> the superintendent to say, have we been overstepping our bounds at all in terms of staff time? Or any well, in committees? terms of interaction with staff? And uh, well, in terms of our committee functions. No, I don't think so either. No, I mean, to, to be honest, during negotiations, I want you guys to take more of a lead. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> I sit on my hands. Uh, can I I'm, ask a I'm on you. general question about language? Um, I, are we moving to more gender inclusive as far as he getting rid of he or she? Mm -hmm. Replacing that with they will not be required to obtain? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, it'd be wise to do that throughout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's part of like an equity audit. Yeah. Maybe we should do that. I mean, that should be in all of our policies. Yes. Right. Yeah. We should be checking all of them for that. So uh, who will do that? Uh, maybe. That's a suggestion. Is that something we need to put on an agenda to discuss more, or is that right. something that, we, that can just be done? Is that something we need to vote on? Is that something that? I mean, we have them already on a regular um, cycle for Lane to report compliance, yes? Right. So mm -hmm. each month as he reports compliance, I could do an equity audit and propose updates to the board? We also have them on our board. Yeah, and, and then we okay. have yeah. our yeah. selfie val yeah. ones. So well, then the, the bigger, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to do it alone. I, you know, I, I, I think we should be have, have an equity team that involves different stakeholders as was re recommended. And I think that would be a great thing to be working on, like auditing documents for equity language. But I think as we're coming across them like this too, yeah. there's a way for us to be able to just like, right. sure, get that done. Right. Maybe. Yeah, how do we not create a ton of redundancy there? Right. And you've got all your federal government policies that are huge. You know, there's actually an ideal time coming up to actually update that that wording because it wouldn't substantively change anything that's in those policies. Right. Um, but we are transitioning to a new website, um, which will mean you know re redoing and getting those policies back up there. That would be the time to do it. I'd be happy to do that for the summer with, mm -hmm. you know, with the web website group. So. Mm -hmm. So there's the policies that we are talking about though are are yeah. for our, 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 governing our policies. policies. Yeah. Those are more the district policies that we. You still approved. you still vote on them. And right, approve, we approved but them, but they're in the consent agenda. We're yeah. we're who, so. Yeah, how would we who, amend? Who owns you this? could just charge me with. We own this policy. Vote on it. This is ours. Who ty who types it? Um. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> They've been in the books for a long time. Yeah. yeah. We, we own them, so we can, if we want to change it up, we can. There so, are yeah, policies to change. Can we just, you know, we just, do we have to vote on that to amend any language to include it? Then we can just do it. Just do it. Yeah, not yeah. if it yeah, doesn't change, change the policy. As long as, it's it's, as, long as it doesn't substantially change. Okay, the so then yeah. as we yeah. come to these, let's just get them we done. We just need to change That's, them. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Who has the documents in a you send them to me. I don't know. Format that can be edited. You must have something. Did you uh, send it to me to send out to the board? Well, I have this in this, but I don't have. You've got. Yeah. You've okay. got the ones that because you made them all for the. You made the chart from the policies. What you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just copying and pasting. I've, I've got and, copies. Uh, yeah. Some of them are PDFs, but I can convert them to. Mm -hmm. convert right. Because yeah. and they're all on our website. Right. I'm Not noticing edited. that after the website attack, yeah. um, they had been going up and they had been replacing some of the things that we had up there with horrible photos and comments. It looks like they have removed uh, through that process um, some of the policies. So we're, we're looking at that at this point. Like the board policies? Yeah. So, you know, you know C10, C10, C11, you know, they oh. were actually how they were putting stuff up is they would remove something that we had there and put something in its place yeah. and so it looks like a couple of the the policies i mean we still have them in the in the the, the main book but they, they've got to be up on the website and so that's a big big job um, and so i'm trying to decide if since we've got the policy book can we just wait until the new website goes up or not um, you know they should be up there but because we're transitioning um, so just we should make it happen before they yeah. go up yeah. As we go, if someone's going yeah. through them, let's just get them done. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't mind editing documents if we're looking for someone to do that work because their board policies. If we feel someone on the board should be doing yeah. that editing, I so don't. that would be our governance yeah. policies. Correct. These ones. Yes. These policies. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Do you, so? Do you you don't have a a um, I have word policy. document. I have a policy. I'm just not. You converted this into a chart. I don't know because you right. have to just change the language here too. You see what I'm saying? Right. We okay. change the language here, yeah. and then we change it in the right. actual policy. Yeah. And too. I don't think I have the chart things. So whatever oh. document would be used to put on okay. to the website, the website once be. it's a PDF yeah. or a JPEG or whatever it is, the the master editable version. Yeah. That's all I need. And then everything else can feed from that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. the word document. I of can the even policies. convert the. Yeah. yeah, and Hannah will do that. Thank you, Hannah. Certainly. Okay. I appreciate you bringing it up. I do. <laughs> this is a hallmark moment. Well, love this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's a, a task that. That you've taken on for us, Hannah. Thank you. Got it. And maybe you can work with Linda sure. to yeah. figure out where the board policies are. Yeah. What? And I know what the policies are. It's just I don't have the chart. You don't you have created, these. Right? Or somebody created. I don't know. Who yeah, created it. I created a bunch of these. So okay. the, they're all in Google Docs. Okay. So okay. I could, I'm I can saying, share those yeah. with you, and you can do, change, make the same language changes in these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Okay. Number four, board committees are to avoid over-identification with organizational parts rather than the whole. Therefore, a board committee that has helped the board create policy on some topic will not be used to monitor organizational performance on that same subject. Mm -hmm. So basically not kind of getting a niche um, expertise and then... Um, having the whole board rely on that committee rather than the whole board taking responsibility. Um, but I said we don't have committees doing monitoring, so I think we're good with that one. Uh, committees will be used sparingly and ordinarily in an ad hoc capacity. I would say most definitely that's how we, um, we don't have a lot of standing committees. Um, this policy applies to any group that is formed by board action, whether or not it is called a committee, and regardless of whether the group includes board members. Mm -hmm. It does not apply to committees formed under the authority of the superintendent. Mm -hmm. And there we are. Okay. Uh, the next policy we were reviewing was 3.0. We got a little bit out of sync, so we're starting on the board management delegation policies, um, but um, 
We have one more governance process one that we'll do next uh, next meeting, um, and that's also just a one um, sentence uh, policy. So 3.0 is the board's sole connection to the operational organization, its achievements, and its conduct will be through the superintendent of schools. So that means the board communicates with the superintendent. Um, we're not bypassing him and going to staff. I would say yes. I don't know of any superintendent. That's actually <laughs> been, really, been really good okay. compared, to, compared to most districts. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're this is, good This still. is when I think it might be worth a while making sure I mean, we want the community to know all of our policies, but this one in particular, I think, is really important for them to understand, um, mm -hmm. especially when we have a large number of public comment. You know, we say we can't take action, um, but and we try to, you know, visually engage with them. But I think they need to understand how our how our flow can work and mm -hmm. why we're not going to immediately speak to it or. Mm -hmm. So at the ownership linkage committee, we'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So we're good to go on that one. Moving on. We have uh, the second reading of the equity policy. So um, at the second reading, this is when the board will be voting to adopt. Um, the policy or not. So, uh, Heather, do you have, or does the board have any um, questions, concerns regarding the equity policy? And we did hear from a few members of the public regarding the policy. Um, To be clear, the generation of this policy is a state policy. This is um, a recommended policy. But the, the wording is state That's right. Wording. It's from the Vermont um, School Board Association, right? And so um, I think that may be what some of the community members were referencing, right, is that um, so it is the state wording. And we, the only changes made were to add our okay. identifiers, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say I appreciated the comments um, about, you know, specific and actionable. And I do think that that is a lens through which, you know, looking at this policy or any equity policy moving forward, we do need to be making sure we have that lens of specific and actionable. Um, so I can understand why this may feel kind of vague um, in that sense. Um, I do always also feel that it's, it's the start of something um, and it shouldn't be the end of something. I think talk a little, um, one of the original plans um, and I think the discussion started next year, um, was this idea that with a policy like this, what we want to do is get the students involved um, in developing it sort of as an end, mm -hmm. like we do with our, our ends policy and our end statement, you know. So, so define for us what this means, and once we've defined for what this means in practice, then it's okay, then what's the logical data to collect uh, um, to see. And so that was a discussion that started a little bit uh, towards the end of last year. Um, so there, mm -hmm. you know, there always was an intent to have have the, uh, you know, the student involvement, the community involvement, mm -hmm. and the shaping of putting the specifics in there, just so so folks can can rest a little easy on that. Right. Um, I, I, that the recommendation that the outcome indicators be yeah. collaboratively identified, and I would like to point out that under the implementation, those bullets under implementation do give clear direction for things such as one of the community members mentioned 
required um, continuous professional development, and that is that is there. Um, also, things such as identifying um, bias practices and um, disparities and opportunity gaps. And so there are, in the, even though it is a brief policy and it is the state language, there are some very clear implementations that I think that we would benefit from. And I don't know, I'm done talking on that topic, I think. I. Yeah. So, and if the board um, approves this policy, mm -hmm. it then goes I got an to you yeah. to <laughs> implement it. Yep. Yes. And so you can choose to use students to yes. reach out to the community. Because yeah. a policy is as good as its implementation. So Right. For, um, to identify outcome indicators and to report to the board on them. Mm -hmm. the, the one that you brought up, the identify bias practices, mm -hmm. it's identify and counteract. So it's about yes. reporting back, not just that's going on, but this is what we're going to do about it. Yes. Right. Action. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, f I, f I feel like some of the public comment is deriving from the uh, lack of confidence in the ability to counteract. Mm -hmm. Do we have, um, is there any way we can add strategy for how to ensure that action happen? I mean, I guess that comes up when you do the report to the board. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of talking out loud here about that. Would it be an annual report? Because it, it seems it like it's annual. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So okay, I think it would be considering some of the public comment about it being the the reason here specifically that we need this is so current and frequent and. Um, present that perhaps annually is not enough for us to monitor it based on the level of concern. Yeah, and I, I think I heard also just the from some of the public, public comment like the proactive stance rather than the reactive stance. Yeah. And the and the and possibly. No offense, superintendents, the check and the balance on where the opinion, to, the, the status is derived from, you know, whether there should be another body that says, we agree with that, um, to, I don't know, create unity there, I guess. I think this is a great, we talked a lot about involving students on the board, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think this would be a very key area if there's an equity committee of students that comes about, that that would be a report that that student body would be able to bring to the board and have student involvement in, you know, potentially presenting that review, if that's something that is mm -hmm. found to be beneficial, but I think that that would be a way to get student voice again in front of the board is it something that we've been wanting to have anyway. And it sounds like reporting perhaps is not mm -hmm. going on. So if uh, uh, the hope would be that if the student body is seeing that the students are having a direct voice to the board, hopefully the effect would be, okay, then my report will be heard. My, it, it, having to report an incident will be heard because it sounds like right now there's a perception that they are not being heard or um, so then what would the board do with that I mean again I don't want to leave students with this sense of okay I reported to the board well, I so it's so about then perception would, right then report to this I mean we would then direct the superintendent to do something 
it's about perception, right? So if there if if the board says we want a committee of of students to help us put together something that will have an effect and we want to hear how it's going from you. The perception is the board is listening directly to the students who are affected about how it is for them. That's seen. We're seen as an authority, so then the student body feels they are being heard Through this because we're hearing them. I'm not saying we take action. I'm not saying we go into operational decisions, but people come to public comment to be heard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we need to listen to something we are specifically being told is felt as though it's not being heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my concern, my concern is one, it's super, uh, takes a lot of courage and you're very vulnerable if you speak up to say this is happening to me. I'm not asking and, for the report And what of I'm the worried about is here. then, okay, so now we've heard all the way up through the chain of command to the board. The board doesn't really have take any action and a student has made themselves super vulnerable. No, I'm not so, saying a student reports an incident to the board. Okay. That is not what I'm saying. Okay. But the fact is, or I can't say fact, but something we heard tonight is students have stopped reporting incidents right. because right. they don't see they don't feel action is being taken. Mm -hmm. Right. If we're talking about monitoring that this policy is being followed through, mm -hmm. one of the monitoring reports we should get is from a committee of students who understand what they'll be doing. We're not asking them for personal, okay, uh, you know. Testimony, yeah. Testimony of, of <clears throat> trust part it does. Of, who are part of Heather's equity work. Mm -hmm. This committee that you're considering bringing about. Yeah, we do. Uh, for example, our wellness policy indicates that there will be a wellness team and that team will meet at least four times per year. So that language, models of that language do exist. But um, I thought it would be best to take exactly what the state recommended and put that in front of you. So um, in the hopes that we would have something. Yeah, and this by all means does not, this is not an attack on this. <laughs> it's just, yes. I think there is a, a desire amongst those who voice their opinion of public comment that mm -hmm. they want something less boilerplate mm -hmm. and more um, detailed and actionable. And, and I'm not suggesting that this isn't actionable, I'm just trying to generate a conversation around where can we create the perception or, you know, create a little bit more equity and um, accountability to the policy. And so that's just, you know, I, I think this idea of having a wellness team meet on a matter mm -hmm. consistently um, and can weigh in, I think that maybe should go into status reporting. And I do agree, status reporting should happen more than annual. I'm curious how we monitor, how we would monitor this policy since it doesn't kind of fit in our, in our framework of monitoring policies, of monitor, because our job is to monitor Lane, mm -hmm. right, and and so how does how does implementation of this like it's his job to then imp implement this policy? It's my it's my it's my my job, or in this case, you know, be delegated to Heather. Mm -hmm. It's it's our job to just like we would do, I would imagine, with um, your end statements, is to work with a group of people to interpret it. Again, what does this mean? And that is, in, so yeah, in, that's in the specifics. And then based upon what the, the group has identified as, as what these specific things that we're trying to improve are, what are the measures that are going to measure progress toward that, towards that, and that's what we get, we get reported out on. I'm going to say a little bit that it would be very helpful to have this policy in place because right now in this work I've been unprotected. Um, and, and this will, will help a little bit with the protection in, in, in the parts and pieces that I've done. So 
it would be very helpful to you. at least get something in, in place tonight that then can be you know modified in the future and a part of that feedback loop is as we're collecting data then you know maybe there are just like any other policies um, hey it doesn't look like we're improving enough here or it looks like there needs to be more detail here you can always right. adjust the policy afterwards right um, but, but I, I would strongly recommend and I, it sounds like you guys are leaning that anyway but get, get it in place so that we have some protections as we do this putting part. it in place so that it can be implemented mm -hmm. yeah and if we are hearing yeah. that that things are not going well as we are hearing now yeah. with the policy in place then we know that there's adjustments then 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 we need to get more specific with our policies but our policies are supposed to start very generally. Yeah, and, yeah. and again, we've got we've got very capable, competent people who can help interpret, and and, um, and you know, it's one of the reasons to have an equity coordinator is to make make sure that also is in terms of what what folks are deciding on is that to kind of balance it out, make sure that it's, it's reasonable, appropriate, going to be effective. Um, and so I, I think that's a, an important piece of this. So the only thing that's left isn't this is not a question for you. Lane or Heather, the only question I have left is is then how do we put this into our annual so structure? So, so that's that what I was just looking at our it would just be a part of end reporting. Make it an end. Put it on your mission statement. We we could put it as an end. We could put it under treatment of students, parents, guardians, and community. We could add it as a as a another enumeration on that one because when you look at our treatment of students, it's it's we don't really it doesn't speak specifically to that but again the superintendent interprets that policy or we have it we could put it it could come under um, the global executive constraint the superintendent shall not cause or allow any practice activity decision or organizational circumstance that is unlawful unsafe and prudent or in violation of commonly accepted educational and professional ethics and practices. So in some ways it fits under it fits that. Under his regular and and I, I think putting well. an, an enumeration under there is, is an important recognition that while these problems have existed in this our town, our district for a long time, um, things have gotten dramatically worse in the last couple of years. Uh, and so I think that, you know, having an enumeration on there like that is the board, you know, making that recognition that, hey, um, you know, given whatever's happening in the world today, things have gotten worse. And so it's important enough um, to try to counteract that as best we can. And you were around when these policies were, were initially developed and adopted. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we add enumeration? So Does we can just write it, or we do can we ask, write it. Or do yeah, we, ask? we can write it, and we could we could work with. Um, I might run it by uh, Susan Mogensen, who is mm -hmm. kind of a policy mm -hmm. governance guru mm -hmm. person, um, just because you do want to keep it fairly general. Yes. Um, so I could. I could, um, but enumerating it acknowledges that it, this is a particular right, issue. That right, we that this is something that we want to highlight. We want to go. We want to dig a little bit deeper, and and this is, in particular, this is an area we want to look at. And we want to make sure, and we want to monitor it. So we have to charge you with, we have to vote to charge you with having this. To, to have a conversation with Susan and see where we could. Right. Um. I'm going to move to adopt the district um, equity policy, policy C29. I'm going to second. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. And then so. I will move to chart Ann <laughs> with um, discussing the placement of uh, Enumeration. Under treatment of students, the policy 2.1, treatment of students. I think that was hard to get in this appropriate Okay. I second that. Just vote for that. Again. Yeah. Further discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, so that will be done. Thank you. And Susan, Susan Mogensen, M-O-G. 
B-M-S-E-N, I believe. Oh, for the comments. Oh, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. It was. We never, we never, we never showed the exit. Okay. All right. Just needed to make a note. Um. Consent agenda. I just overheard some comments about our yeah, have it minutes. Turned. Yeah, on the minutes from January 11. Rachel noted that there's not an adjournment time or a, when we exited executive session. So we've been in executive session. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Does anyone remember? <laughs> What's the question? When did we adjourn? When did we adjourn? Yeah, the session on January 11th. Yeah. Oh, I can look back to see my we have frozen oh, pipe. unfrozen yeah. pipes. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Wait, <laughs> 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 I, I have it. Oh yeah, Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea's got uh, it. Right? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now we um, exited executive delayed. session. We entered at 8.27 and we exited at 8.54. Thank you. Thank you. And adjourned at 8.55. Awesome. And adjourned at 8.55. It must have been 8.55. <laughs> what else? What other information was missing? <laughs> adjourned the Adjourning meeting. the meeting. But we'll just... 8.57 sounds about right. 8.55. 55. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you okay. for doing the minutes. So does, does she, do you have to redo those and then add that in there? I'll put them in this, these minutes. Okay. That, that so, and then will we, so do I, do we need to accept these minutes or do we wait no, until No, this you, will be in the minutes here and then you approve these minutes. It will say that. The, that was added to the, you, can, you can improve okay. them now with so we the can improve changes. them now yeah. as is and that we're going to make mm -hmm. some adjustments to them okay so do i have a motion to approve the minutes yes. and they are so moved with the amended um executive session at adjournment time mm -hmm. second seconded by hannah any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. okay Okay, there we go. Um, we have a general update regarding negotiations with the teachers union. Um, I think that's the support staff. Yeah. This uh, or is it yeah. support staff? Support staff. Yes. I don't know if the team wants to talk or you guys want me to talk. But. That was a very long meeting. Oh, yes. Very long. <laughs> um, we went to mediation. When was that? Uh, uh, the 25th. The 25th of January. But we reached an agreement at the end. Yeah. So hooray. Um, and I don't know what else I should say on that. Or can say on that. Can you can say, say anything you want. Second, second you reach in pass, you can. Oh, we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it was successful. Thank you for, Thanks coming. for, coming. Thank Thank you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I think it was a successful, the fact that we were able to reach an agreement um, was great that we were able to leave that meeting with that in place. Um, and we would recommend that the board, we have to vote on it as a board, right? Right. Uh -huh. So yeah, we recommend that the board approve the agreement. Mm -hmm. Expires 25, so two years. Two years, so two years. Uh, the basic, basic numbers and stuff, so um, it was a 12.4% increase in year one, an 8.4% increase in year two. This is for the support staff. Um, there were two language changes as well. As well. Um, it was making um, Christmas Day a paid holiday um, at a cost of about 8200 to the district, and then adding a sick bank that was similar to the teachers. So those were the, the, the major changes. 
Um, I'm as kind of the advisor piece, you know, I, I think it was a, a very good deal. I highly recommend that the board pass it. Um, I, I don't think, you know, it's through the discussions that it quite addressed the district's desire to have starting salaries higher um, than they, they were, but it, it is a good start in that direction because uh, we, we were hoping to get the starting salaries higher. Yes. Yeah. So do we have a motion to, support, to uh, accept that support staff agreement? Sure, I'll make a motion. I'll second. Second. To second. Accept. Seconded by Sarah. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we've got that official now. Um, and do we have a general update on the status of the teachers? Yeah, um, they are going to mediation with the teachers March 15th at 4.30 p.m. Okay. 4.30. Yeah. Hey, we're trying to get a, a little later, but that's, yeah. yeah. And that'll be through, uh, my guess is through a, a Google or a Zoom link. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Oh, we have ownership linkage that day. Oh, we can at 4.30. How did I do that? Did I do that? We can, not till we can change, change that. that. Yeah. That's the way it's on. All right. Just bring snacks to your thing. I can do that. We need to start at the real time. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just go through the next piece. Oh, Tab has a question. Tab, has a question. Tab I'm going to get to you, but we're going to go through the the stuff before we go into executive session. So I'm going to have you speak just before we head into executive session. Um, Sorry, I, before we move on, I have that was going to be May 5th. Um, wow, I have that really wrong. Are we sure it's March 15th? Yes, it's March 15th. I put it on my calendar as well. Wow. I missed by and, two uh, and just to be on the same side, make sure nothing's changed in the interim. Two and a half. I'll, I'll double check. <laughs> I'll double check with folks tomorrow. Thank you. But yeah. So we'll move the owners. Sorry. Nope. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we can reschedule the ownership linkage. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we can we can reschedule that. And seriously, the the support staff and you guys know with it's five and a half hours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't anticipate, you know, that this will be a short meeting either. Mm -hmm. So. Next. We could start earlier on a different day or on that day. It's just I would recommend it. Yeah, when, well, we we'll, we can reschedule the next <laughs> meeting. I'll take that one. In our next resort. committee meeting. That is the one. next committee meeting, right? No. No, we oh, have wait, one coming up. Oh, wait, we have one this up. month. Okay, yeah, that's right. Next yeah. week. So, yeah, next I'm a, Wednesday. I'm a month ahead. I'll meet you in May. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so superintendent's report. Any questions from the board on that? Uh, and how about any of the principals? Financials lane, how are we looking? So at uh, end of December, we should have had 50% of the budget spent. We are at the end of January. We have only spent, what, 46% of the budget so far, so we're well in the black right now. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so action recap. Uh, Linda and Heather are going to be sending out a sign-up for mm -hmm. the Portrait of the Graduate work. Um, Ownership Linkage Committee is going to be meeting next Wednesday. I'm going to be connecting with Susan Mogensen about adding an enumeration to our treatment of students policy. And there was one other I'm thing. I'm going to be working with Linda. And Hannah is going to be doing some language. Language cleaning up of our language on our board policies, uh, governance policies. Um, and I think that's. That's all of the action that we've got happening between now and the next time um, we have a meeting. Um, we're not going to adjourn because we need to go into executive session. 
where we're going to be um, discussing uh, a labor negotiation. But before we do that, we're going to have um, some public comment because we are going to be needing to make a decision. And Kev is going to speak on behalf of the union. Um, so you have the floor, Kev. All right. <clears throat> Thank you uh, for giving me this time to speak. And I promise I won't take too much of your time. Um, so, yeah, we, we're asking the board uh, to consider a side letter to, I know it's a little weird, a side letter right after uh, possibly settling this, this agreement with support staff. Um, but this is an issue that came up after our initial proposals had already been filed. And I believe I, I have to admit I'm filling in for Nora, so so um, forgive me, Lane, if I say something that that isn't true. But I believe that you and Nora had been talking about, you know, yeah, sort of what might be possible. Um, so we've proposed some language, and and um, basically our, our rationale is that um, the current language stipulates that paraprofessionals who agree to uh, sub for a classroom teacher. Um, get a $25 stipend. Um, and the issue that has come up is that there are some, some support staff who are not uh, paraprofessionals, for instance, front office staff or media center staff who are doing a lot of subbing because we're having trouble finding, you know, subs. And so they're getting pulled from their duties. Um, and it's, yeah, it, it just felt like it would be more equitable for that language to include all support staff. Um, Lane had mentioned in some of the discussions, and again, Lane, correct me if I'm saying anything that's not right, um, that one of the, the major concerns from the district's end was that in the small schools, because there's not like a full-time nurse, for instance, that there are people who kind of have to fill in on a regular basis. Um, and so we added some language at the end that says, this will not include support staff who regularly perform the duties of a licensed staff member as part of the regular job, just to make sure that there was a, an exception that could be made um, for that. So um, yeah, that's basically what I've got. And yeah, just asking the board respectfully to, to consider it. Um, and I'll hang out if, if there are any questions and otherwise I'll get out of your hair. Any questions for Ted from the board? Anything else you want to um, say to us before we go into the executive session to decide? Yeah, um, I mean, I can, I can talk a little, little bit about it. It probably would be appropriate that way that, you know, Ted has an opportunity to respond. And I apologize. I kind of wrote, wrote this out because I, I spent a good deal of time kind of studying things. Um, and I, there's, there's bigger components to this that the union may or may not, may or may not recognize. So, um, so the support staff, um, and, and Ted kind of touched on this, they're comprised of eight different job categories um, that are recognized in the, the master contract. So you have, this, you have this contract that's called support staff, and there are these eight job categories that are under it. So there's paraprofessionals, head cooks, cooks, administrative assistants, clerks, custodians, lead custodians, and maintenance workers. And under the contract as it currently exists, there's only one category of support staff that has provided additional pay for assisting with duties outside of their normal work expectations. And that's the paraprofessionals, and, and Ted had touched on that. Um, basically, the paraprofessionals who agree to sub for a teacher receive either sub pay or their salary plus $25, whichever is greater. Now, the thing that I think it's important for the board to consider is that the support staff contract is silent on all other potential duties and for all other job categories. And that's an important point, and I'll, I'll get to it in just a moment. Um, and that was negotiated by the district to ensure, in part, that uh, administrative assistants could assist in basic nursing duties without additional pay, right? Especially in terms of Braintree and Brookfield when the nurse was not present. But it also provides the district something else. Um, that silence provides the district with a broader ability to have support staff assist in other duties when needed without additional remuneration. So I think it's important to recognize that. Um, under the current contract, um, this is a right of the district um, that exists because of good faith negotiation, and it carries a significant value um, to the district, though it is very rarely used. Um, 
should the board agree to what the union is proposing, it would represent the district giving up a substantial right with no kind of comparable give from the union. Um, and so I just want to make sure that, that that's important. Um, and again, Tev is, is correct. You know, I was talking a lot, lot with Nora, um, but this issue came up for the union before negotiations, before initial proposals were on the table. I had spoken with Nora about that. So I'm not sure why. Um, it could have just been timing. Um, but I'm not sure why it wasn't a part of that negotiation session because that's what we kind of talked about is, you know, to, to negotiate it. Because there might be some exchanges that we could make to, to, to get this into place. Um, so I, I think that's just kind of an important piece to, to point out there. Yes, um, changing this language um, potentially is removing some significant rights for the for management, um, for the district to be able to ask, um, you know, staff members to step up, up above and beyond, especially in cases of emergency. Um, and so I think that's, you know, there's a significant give here. We don't use that that often. Teb is right, it was used a bit during, you know, COVID when we had teachers out and shifting people around. So, you know, usually if it's used, it's in an emergency situation, but so just so the board has that to consider. Tab, did you want to add any more to that from the union perspective? Um, yeah, just just a couple things. I, I when um, I, I I was under the impression I don't have dates and stuff in front of me. Like I said, this was this was more something that Nora was on top of. Um, but I I. I I don't believe that the, that the incident that sort of prompted this discussion happened before negotiations had started. I, I think it happened in November. Again, I'm not trying to contradict you, but that just... So, Ted, I, Tab, I, I actually emailed Nora with the timeline and the dates and asked her in an email to make sure that it was documented, you know, why this hadn't been done in negotiation based upon the timeline. So I did check my dates and my numbers. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm sure you did. Um, I, I guess I, I just want to say, like, it was certainly not the intent of the union to, to try to subvert the negotiation process. I, I'm not saying that's what you're implying, but yeah. I just want the board to note that. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't have a whole lot else to say. I, I think I have a, a different view from, from Wayne about um, the, the the frequency with which this is this is happening, um, just in terms of like the, the need for for subbing, um, and I think uh, it, it's yeah, I think we we brought it because I think it is something that is affecting support staff morale, like this perceived discrepancy, um, and yeah, I, I I wasn't I wasn't thinking about it as something that that would be such a significant lift for the board, but that's obviously a uh, decision to make, so. I think that's all I want to say. Thanks for thanks for hearing me out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Board, board members, any other mm -hmm. questions before we head into executive session to decide on this? Are we inviting a That's your call. Yeah. That's our call. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's so can we have a motion to? Move to enter executive session to discuss labor negotiations with the superintendent and assistant superintendent. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.